Say something right quick. I think back on the African-American people in America. I think how that they were taken against their wills, put in the belly of ships, brought over here, beat, cussed. Many of them died in the guts of those ships, thrown overboard. They were pulled from families over there. You ain't never heard a gut-wrenching song you hear a black person sing one of those old black Negro spirituals. Nobody knows. I can't sing it like that, see? Because I hadn't experienced what they be. When you've experienced hell, it comes out of the voice. I said, when you experience hell, it comes out of the voice. If you're one of those people that you got problem with black people or whatever, you better shut your mouth. Because they're God's people. You better hear what I'm saying to you. So shut your mouth. You better- Hello, my good people. Welcome back again to our channel. Do you know that black people are the true chosen children of God? Specifically black American people. They're the true children of God, chosen by God himself. Now, in this video, uh, Pastor John Kilpatrick is telling his congregations that uh, no one should mess with black people. And if you hate those black people, it means you have got a problem. And therefore, you have to fix the problem because if you dare mess with black people, God himself will punish you because you are messing with the God chosen people. Now, in this video, I've compiled many videos. I've also put in Dr. Louis Parakan's video affirming that black people are the true children of God. And this has gone ahead giving reasons and uh, evidences showing that black Americans or African American people are the true children of God. You know, many people always have doubt that God chose black Americans to be his children. Because if you read the story of slavery and with the story of uh, Moses, when God sent Moses to go and talk to Pharaoh, release his children to be free. So the story of Moses with the people of Israelites is the same story. It's indeed the same story. So guys, without wasting much of your time explaining what I think you're going to get from this video, I want us to watch these clips sampled by me. And uh, if you learn something from this video, please let me know through the comment section. Please talk to me and uh, give us your thoughts. What do you think about this video? Do you agree that uh, African Americans or black Americans and the black people are the true children of God, chosen by God himself? Do you agree with uh, Pastor John Kilpatrick that African American people are the true children of God and God will avenge black people? God will come and stand for his black people because those are his own children that he chose. The people who have gone through slavery. You know, I've always been asking this question. How comes is it's the black people from Africa who are taken for slavery? Why well, there are no other people who could work in slave farms? Why only black people? How did these people came to take black people for slavery, leaving other races? What is it that is so unique with these black people? Is God trying to manifest himself through black people? Does that affirm to us or confirm to us that uh, indeed... The slaves who moved to America are the true children of God himself. So let's dive, guys, to watch these clips by John Kilpatrick. Watch uh, Louis Farrakhan. At the end of the video, I really want to know your thoughts in the comment section. And let's dive. Say something right quick. I think back on the African-American people in America. I think how that they were taken against their wills in the belly of ships, brought over here, beat, cussed. Many of them died in the guts of those ships, thrown overboard. They were pulled from families over there. You ain't never heard a gut-wrenching song you hear a black person sing one of those old black Negro spirituals. Nobody knows. I can't sing it like that, see, because I hadn't experienced what they be. When you've experienced hell, it comes out of the voice. I said, when you experience hell, it comes out of the voice. If you're one of those people that you got problem with black people or whatever, you better shut your mouth because they're God's people. You better hear what I'm saying to you. So shut your mouth. You better shut your white mouth.
you better shut your white mouth. I'm not kidding you. I know some of you is raised in the deep south and you is raised by prejudiced people and bigoted people. You better get that out of your system. You better get it out of your system. It'll cause you to suffer right along with those masters. It'll cause you to suffer right along with them. These are God's people. And I know that there's wicked and white races and wicked and black races and all that. I'm not justifying none of that stuff. I'm just saying God knows what happened to the black race. He knows how they wound up over here. And God is going to re reimburse the black people for all their trouble and all their labor. You watch what I tell you. And perhaps had God not sent black people here, America might have self-destructed by now. We have some really bad habits. We have some habits that are only exclusive to black people. White people don't do this. Only black people do this. Let me give you one. Nielsen, look it up for yourself. Last year it came out with a major report on television viewing in America. Black people watch 72 hours of television a week. That's 10 hours of television a day. Only black people do this. We watch 40% more television than any cultural group in the history of America. So let me say this, let me say this about that. If you are a Negro watching 10 hours of television a week, I mean a day, you are toast. You are useless. We are simply waiting for you to die because you add no real value and cannot possibly fill God's purpose for you on this earth watching 10 hours of that ignorant piece of every day. It's not possible for you to amount to anything. But that's what we do. That's what we do. No one else does that. That's a bad habit. And until we fix that habit, nothing will happen for us. Now, I understand why we do this. Because it is a form of medication. It is a form of being anesthetized. It's a form of assuaging the deep psychological injury that is embedded in our subconscious mind based on our 400 years of very bad treatment. I understand. But we must heal ourselves from that. That's a very bad habit. The other bad habit we have is we don't know who we are. Most black people have no clue how awesome, magnificent, and beautiful, and brilliant we really are. Either we have forgotten or we never learned. No one tells us, no one teaches us that we are the children of the slaves that would not die, that we have the genetic encoding of the great kings and queens of Africa, that we were building pyramids and solving complex engineering problems when other cultures were living in huts eating each other. And in spite of the fact that America kept its foot on our throat for 350 years, we overcame that and we rose like the phoenix. So if everything happens for a reason and serves us in some special way and we will never understand that reason looking forward and we will only understand it looking backwards, if that is in fact true, and it is, maybe we were not brought here. Maybe we were sent here. Do you believe that God would put his weakest people here to do his toughest job? I don't think so. How could an America who could morally, spiritually, and biblically justify the kidnapping, raping, and pillaging of another two people, natives already in America, and Africans brought to America have any moral or spiritual grounding.
and perhaps had God not sent black people here, America might have self-destructed by now. We are an awesome and, po and powerful people. We are the moral center and spiritual center of this country. We are God's first people. The first human remains, 75,000 years of humans as we know them, were found in the Olduvai Gorge in Ethiopia. If you're hanging out in Ethiopia, brothers and sisters, you're blue-black. I've been to Ethiopia. You ever see Ethiopians? First of all, you'd know one if you saw one. And they're very dark. And for 200,000 years, according to the Smithsonian, uh, life centered around Africa. Life was in Africa. <laughs> Here's an interesting little side tidbit. That white people did not even appear on the face of the earth until 20,000 years ago. And that's because of the ice age, phenotypes changed, skin color changed, they migrated out of Africa. You know the story. So we have a 200,000 year head start. We are God's first people. And God ain't stupid. But most of us don't even know this. We have no clue. We dabble in whatever history we dabble in, it's about 400 years old. That's about all we know. There's a much greater story than that. Sometimes God allows a problem to be created that only he can solve. And through that solution offered by God, through one of his humble servants, he makes himself known to those who know him not. So it was in Israel, when Israel was in bondage to Pharaoh. Pharaoh was a great and powerful king. Israel was lowly and weak under Pharaoh's heavy hand. But it pleased Almighty God that Moses be raised up from among the slaves to champion the cause of the slaves that Pharaoh might know that God had intervened in the affairs of the slave. I am in trouble with the American public and with Jewish people in particular, not because I am anti-Semitic, but I am in trouble with them because I dare to say that the black people of America are the real chosen people of Almighty God. I know that I have said this in the midst of many scholars and scientists of religion, but like Elijah the prophet, I will invite the scholars of religion to Mount Carmel once again. <laughs> and I will be glad to challenge any scholar leader from the Pope of Rome to any Imam in Mecca or otherwise that the black man in America is the fulfillment of divine prophecy and none can take it away from us. The logical question that one must ask is, is Farrakhan one of those crazy crackpots? Or is he a man that is speaking the truth? The Bible says that God would choose a people that were no people at all. And he would make them his people. The Bible says that God would choose a foolish people. And he would choose them to be his own. The Bible teaches that God would choose a stone that was rejected of men. He would choose a people that were despised 
rejected, unloved, and unwanted. And he would claim them to be his people and he would be their God. And he would lift the bottom rail to the top and the last would become the first. And this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our sight. Now, if I am incorrect, then I would like very much to be corrected. But you cannot correct me by calling me a bigot. Nor can you correct me by calling me a racist. Nor can you correct me by calling me a separatist. Nor can you correct me by calling me anti-Semitic. These are names that are used to blot out the truth of what I say so that people will not reason with what I am really saying. <laughs> but I'm here in Memphis tonight to answer any charge that they care to bring against me. For I, like Jesus, am innocent. <laughs> but I, like Jesus, am hated of this world not because I'm an evil man, but because I dare to speak the truth that uncovers the hypocrisy of this world. <laughs> to my beloved brother that sang that wonderful song, you don't know how close you are. Soon? No, not soon. Now. You are done with the troubles of this world. Now you are done with the troubles of this world. Let me make it real clear to you. The Bible talks about a people that God would choose. But that people that God would choose would have to undergo great suffering, trial, tribulation and deprivation. In the book of Genesis in the 15th chapter, the 13th, 14th and 15th verses, God says to Abraham, know of a surety, Abraham, that your seed is going to be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. And they shall serve them and they shall afflict them for hundred years but after that time I will come and I will judge that nation which they shall serve and afterwards shall they come out with great substance and go to their fathers in peace and be buried in a good old age God made that prophecy to Abraham and further on in that chapter, you see the children of Israel going into Egypt to suffer in bondage for 400 years. Then you see God coming to Egypt, not sending anyone, but coming himself. And he appears out of a burning bush and speaks to Moses and tells Moses, Take off your shoes. Ground where you stand is holy. I've chosen you, Moses. Go and tell Pharaoh the time is accomplished. Go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Moses wanted to know, who am I to go to Pharaoh? Well, I can't speak plain. And Jehovah chided him and said, who made your mouth? <laughs> said, but if you're uncomfortable, I'll send your brother Aaron with you. Both of you go. But Moses, I hold you responsible. Tell Pharaoh that I said, let them go. If he asks, who sent you? Tell him I am. That I am. <laughs> what do you mean? Tell him that I, a personal pronoun, I've come in person. And I am, meaning I exist. 
And I am that I am. Tell him that he'll understand. Now, the problem with our reading of Scripture, dear reverence, is that when we read the Scripture, reverent, we read the Scripture as though we're taking our people into a time machine. We're either taking them back in time to Jesus, back in time to Moses, or way up yonder in Beulah's land. What's the matter, reverend, that we can't take the Scripture and deal with the present time and the present circumstances in which we find our people? attacking you reverend but I am here to instruct you no 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 don't take that from an arrogant uh, point of view beloved pastors you are the key to the rise of our people no politician can cause the black man to rise no politician has that power but the preachers have power all over America and if the preachers would stand up and not be afraid to preach the gospel we would be free overnight oh yes I hear you reverend you're saying well I preach the gospel let us see good is the Bible if the Bible does not deal with us right now? Why should we read history unless yesterday has a bearing on today? We must understand that scripture is all pointing toward a great finale and a grand fulfillment of the prophecies of the prophets. The Jews have stepped into the shoes of the chosen people of God. I heard a story once about lie and truth. One day lie and truth went bathing. <laughs> and while truth had taken off his clothes and got into the sea, lie saw truth naked in the water and jumped out and put on truth's clothing. <laughs> and when truth looked up, lie was gone, dressed up in truth's clothing. So now you have naked truth trying to catch up with a well-dressed lie, but we got him now. challenged the Jews to prove that they were in bondage in Egypt for 400 years building pyramids. I challenged the Jews, bring us your evidence that you are the people of God. I challenged the scholars and the theologians, bring your proof. Well-dressed lie, we're going to start stripping you off of our clothes now. <laughs> there is nothing in the history of Egypt that says that a people named Jews were in bondage in Egypt for 400 years under any king named Pharaoh. Something like that happened but not the way you commonly understand it. What you have in the Bible is not actual history that happened. What you have both in the Bible and Quran is a prophetic 
symbolic picture of something that would take place at the end of the world. And in order to hide the real Pharaoh, the real Israel, and the real Moses, God put the language in the past in order to cover a thing that was coming up in the future. Now let's uncover it all. Are you saying, Farrakhan, that there was not a Moses? Oh, no. There was indeed a Moses. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught us that the history of Moses is that Moses went up into the hills and cave sides of Europe and there he civilized the white race after they had fallen down on their all fours walking around in the caves of Europe like the wild beasts of the field. <laughs> Moses was their great emancipator. And this is why your scripture says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. What serpent did Moses lift up in the wilderness? It is not talking about a man going after snakes, but a man going after a people whose path is crooked, whose tongue is forked, and the poison of asps is under their tongue. And as Paul said, their feet are swift to shed blood. There's none that doeth good, no, not one. This is a serpent-like people that Moses lifted up. How did he lift them up? He lifted them up by means of strong law. And this is why in medicine you have the symbol of snakes climbing up on something that is upright. That's right. It means that a serpent-like people right. would be able to climb up on the uprightness of divine law. Yes, and any time you have a people that have become as we have become, living in spiritual caves, very savage in our behavior, the only thing that will lift a people up is the divine law of Almighty God. So you have the law of the Old Testament giving you ten commandments that have to be re-given today to black people who have become wicked in our sojourn in America under the leadership and rulership of a people of sin and iniquity. So we are born in sin. Listen to me, Reverend. Don't get frightened. Listen. But you don't have to be afraid. I'm doing the talking. The only thing that America can do to silence my voice is to kill me. And oh, America... And oh, Jewish people, though you don't like what Farrakhan is saying, you would be wise and be instructed as your Bible teaches you. You better kiss the sun, lest he be angry, and you won't tarry but a little while. I am not before you of myself. I warn America in the name of Almighty God. Leave Farrakhan alone. For if you touch me, God will not only require my blood at your hands, but he will bring the blood of all of the prophets that you have killed from Abel to Zechariah to bear on this one generation. It would be better that you had a millstone around your neck and be dropped in the bottom of the sea. It would be wise to leave me alone. I am the last of the warners of God for you.
of it, fear not. Don't be afraid for me. Be afraid for those who would attempt to harm me. Don't be afraid for me. Be afraid for America. For America is in the sunset of her days unless she turns and listens to this insignificant child of the slave. Let me go on. Your Bible is telling you and me that as Moses had to lift up the serpent in the wilderness, you, the sons of men, have to be lifted up again today. And as Moses gave a law that set up the worship of one God and not many gods, and that we should not make any statues or any images or bow down and worship them, that has to be taught all over again. For the worship of our people has become corrupted. We hew a piece of wood down out of the forest. It can't hew itself. Man hews it. We take clay and we become the potter. And we make it into a statue, then paint it, then bow down to what our own hands have made. And say, this is God. And put up a picture of a Caucasian looking man. Sometimes he's brunette and sometimes he's blonde. And they tell us that this is Jesus. But the scripture tells you and me that he had hair like lamb's wool and he had feet like brass burned in an oven. And those of you who cannot see your way to following a black Jesus Christ, you are off base today. And all white people who claim to love Jesus, will you love him if he don't come back looking like you think? I didn't hear it myself, but someone told me that Jimmy Swaggart was preaching recently and told the people that he believes that Jesus is a black man. Billy Graham said the same a few years ago, and Bobby Kennedy asked the people, what would you do if God were black? I said, "Uh uh-oh, Bobby, tell it. (laughs) We're not dealing in racism. God does not want us bowing down to any images. Thou shalt not steal. That's a good That's a pretty good law for us, isn't it? You don't have to teach that to righteous people. You teach that to people who have grown up in wickedness. Thou shalt not bear false witness against our neighbor. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt honor thy mother and thy father. Thou shalt not covet whatever belongs to your neighbor. That has to be taught again. And you, the people of God, whom God has chosen to be his own, have to be reformed and brought up to standards of righteousness and decency that you may carry out your divine uh, mission for Almighty God. Let's look at the Old and New Testaments very quickly and then get to the core of my coming to Memphis tonight. How long have black people been in America? History says our first fathers were brought to these shores in the year 1555 on a ship named Jesus. And from 1555 to 1985 is 430 years. In the book of Exodus it says that the children of Israel made their exodus in the 430th year of their sojourn. Now, here we are. I'm speaking to those who claim to be the chosen of God. History shows that we have fulfilled the promise and the suffering and the tribulation. How long have we been in America? 430 years. Have we been in a strange country? Yes, indeed. Have they treated us like we are strangers? Yes, indeed. 
Are the ways of white people strange? Yes, they are. Have we been afflicted in America? Yes, we have. One year or two? No. Every year that we have been in America, we have been afflicted. So what does the scripture say? After that time, I will come. God says he's going to pay his people a visit. He's going to come down and see whether the cry is altogether what he had heard for him. He had heard their moaning and their groaning and their cries that reached his ears. I will come and I will judge that nation. Is America under divine judgment right now? Talk back to me. The mighty powerful America. That boasted like uh, that Queen Babylon. She said, I sit as a queen and shall see no sorrow. But one prophet looked at her and said, Oh, virgin daughter of Babylon, come and sit thou down in the dust. Virgin daughter of Babylon is talking about America. America is like a daughter of Babylon and she's a virgin because nobody has had her. She has always been the victor, the powerful one. But the virgin daughter of Babylon is now being reduced and God is saying, come and sit down in the dust. The rain is against her. The snow is against her. Hail is against her. Fly. Bo Weevil's coming after her. Look at America, brother and sister. She's under divine judgment right now. And everything you read in your Bible as plagues coming against Pharaoh, those same plagues are coming against America. The same thing that God did for Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar, turning the neighboring nations against Babylon. It's happening to America right now. She's hated all over the world. The Mexicans don't like her. The people in El Salvador don't like her. The people in Honduras don't like her. The people in Nicaragua don't like her. The people in the Caribbean don't like her. All over the world she's being hated. Why? God is stirring the nations up because America's evil has absolutely outstepped the limits. She's a kingdom that has been weighed in the balance and found wanting. The judgment is here. And now, what must be done? You see, it's time for you to make your exodus. Listen, listen, listen. Exodus. Exodus means coming out. I like that. It's like a baby in the womb whose time has come. It must come out. Your time has come. You must come out. Come out of what? Are you saying, Farrakhan, that we should get up and go back to Africa? I'm saying, black brother and sister, it's time for you to come out. Come out of what? Come out of Egypt. Soon I will be done with the troubles of the world. Come out of the trouble of your slave master's children. Come out of the mind of your slave master's children. Come out of the way of your slave master's children. Why? The scripture says, me and my people are wicked. Pharaoh talking. And the people of America are wicked. And you are not to follow their wicked example. Come out. Look at your Bible. Come out of her. Huh? You all right? You must come out of a slave mentality. That makes you think like a slave. Well, I can't do nothing. I shouldn't say nothing. Because they might get angry with us. And Lord, I... I, I wanted to come out and hear that Farrakhan guy, but 
Lord, I'm so scared. I wish I had not come. <laughs> See, you're thinking like a slave. And your day of slavery is over. You must come out of that. Well, I, I, I might lose my job, you see. <laughs> Lord, that television showed me sitting there. And I hope they don't put me on the news because I told the boss I was sick tonight and, and I don't want to lose my job. But God don't want you working for the master anymore. God wants you working for him and working for yourself. Listen to me. I say, I say it again. A little slower. God does not want you working for the master anymore. God got a job for you. Listen to me. Time to come out. Come out of what? Come out of that mind of dependency on white people. That they must feed you, clothe you, shelter you, give you education, make jobs for you. That's what a slave master does for a slave. But when your time is up, you got to begin to do those things for yourself. It's time to come out. Come out of what? You all all right? Come out of what? Come out of sin. Come out of drugs. Come out of alcoholism. Come out of the freakish behavior you've learned from your slave master's children. Come out. Come out. But the Bible also says that a mixed multitude went out with Moses. You know what that means? That white folks have a chance to come out too. If America wants to live, she got to come out. Come out of what? Come out of the mind of white supremacy that's based on a myth. Come out of the arrogance that America must dictate to others how they should live and what kind of government they should have. Come out, America. You got to come out of that racist mind that makes you think that you have some divine right to rule. Your time to rule is up. God has chosen someone else to sit in your seat, even as he anointed David to sit in the seat of Saul. Saul was still occupying the seat, but David was being groomed. It's you. You. Your time has come. Now, if you act in accord with the time, Success will come immediately to you. But if you want to hold on to the old mind and the old way that time has said God wants you to come out of, then you will not only lose jobs and lose money and lose power, you will lose your life. Now let's see if we can prove what we're saying. You got a minute? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's hot in here, but there's a hotter day coming. This is light. Bear with me just a few more minutes. Beloved, listen. Most of you that voted prayed that God would give you Mondale. You know God answers prayers. But he gave us Reagan for four more years. Would you tell me why? See, God knows what you need. So whether you know it or not, God has inspired Mr. Reagan. Reagan is doing his job. He's cutting back. Look at it. Cut him off a social program. Cut back on food stamps. Cut back on aid to dependent children. Cut back on entitlement funds that will give them education. Cut back on small business administration loans. You crying out, what, what, what's the matter? He's cutting back like that. Don't you know that hurts the poor? Oh, shut up. That don't hurt the poor. 
that helps the poor. Because you're only poor, not because you're poor. You're poor because you're ignorant. Listen! Listen! You're poor because you're foolish. You're poor because you squander your substance that you have like the prodigal son in riotous living. You're poor because you don't know how rich you are. You're poor because you want to stay that way. You don't have to be that way. Blessed are the poor. Theirs is the kingdom of God. What are you talking about, Jesus? Y'all all right? Just a couple more minutes. God put Reagan on a mission to push you out. Your Bible said a seed gave up the dead. And the book says hell prepared the dead to meet their God. It's all talking about you. You the dead. When a seed swallows something and kills it, it takes it down. Then after a while it floats it back to the surface so that the family may claim the dead body. And if the family doesn't claim the dead body, the seed destroys it. America took us down like Jonah swallowed up in the belly of a whale. Here you are laying around in the belly of America. She integrates everybody but you. Jonah in the belly of the whale begins to pray and cry out to his God. And all of a sudden the whale gets indigestion and spits Jonah up on dry land. Now you are a foolish person if you think that some whale out there swallowed a human being and he was running around in the belly of the whale three days and three nights. Oh, hush. It's talking about black folk laying in the belly of this great mammal, the United States of America. You laying here in her belly. She can't digest you. She can't bring you into the melting pot and make you a part of her system because her system is not for black people. Her system was made for white people. Are you listening to me? She don't ever intend to include you. It's your time. It has come. Now God is making the Supreme Court strike down affirmative action. All around you, the sign should be telling you something is up. The Ku Klux Klan is rising. Something is up. The Nazis are rising. Something is up. The Aryan Brotherhood is rising. Something is up. What's up? God is either going to get you or kill you. If you don't move the way you're supposed to move, as the Bible teaches you, those that rebelled against Aaron and Moses, they were bitten by fiery serpents and cockatrices. God is preparing the fiery serpents for you right now because if you don't want to do something for yourself, God got some white folk already prepared to burn you and to sting you and to force you to go for your own self. You may take it or let it alone. You in Memphis should know what I'm talking about. You should already know it. Some white folk hate your shadow. Don't want your shadow to darken their doorstep. Well, wise people learn how to turn these circumstances toward their good. Here's what we propose. We've had a rough time in America, but God is at the head of it. All of this was to make you a people ready for God's service. You may not believe it, brothers and sisters, but God intends to use you to redeem not just our people, but to redeem the world and bring a world that has gone astray from God back to Him. That's your duty. 
He's got to get you up, clean you up, and get you ready. For His own Spirit is to come into you. I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit, dear sister and brother, that you get in the church and you jump and you run up and down the aisles and fall out. No, no, no. That's not the Spirit I'm talking about. Because that Spirit may give you the power to run up and down the aisle. But God wants to give you a spirit of wisdom and power that will make you run up and down the earth. And everywhere your foot steps, you will purify the earth and make the entire earth a house of worship and praise of Almighty God. That's right. Your great songs in the future won't be, come on baby, let's get down. Your songs will be a praise of God. Your dance will be a praise of God. Your music will be a praise of God. Your wisdom will be a praise of God. God intends to make you wiser than any people that ever lived and turn you into the most beautiful people that ever existed. Where's your proof of that, Farrakhan? I was born among you. I am a student of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But I speak as no black men speak today. That's a sign. A sign of what God is going to do for you. Look, His Spirit is all over me. I am baptized and anointed in His Holy Spirit. I'm not jumping up and down. But I'm moving anywhere I want to go in the earth. And everywhere I go and spread the word of fire starts. That will purify the sons and daughters of Levi. Look. Look at what I'm saying to you. I'm a man that's 52 years old. I have nine children and 14 grandchildren. Put the camera close. What does that mean? That means that a man in your midst has been taught how to eat to live, fulfilling the scripture. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. This is a sign of you. All of you are powerful black men and women. You're not ordinary. I'm talking about all of you. The one in here that thinks you are the least. Oh brother and oh sister, if you could just discuss what God has deposited in your soul you are to be as great or greater than the prophets of God the book said he will pour out his spirit on you in these days without number that you will see the old prophets walking around you will see Abraham and David and Lot and Moses and Noah coming right up among you Young men shall see visions and old men shall dream dreams. Some of us are becoming so wise today that we can see tomorrow. Some of our children can actually pour water in a glass and look into the glass and see what is going on in parts of the world just like you look at a television set. No, I'm not spooked up, man. I am telling you that God is present and He has come for you. That's why you sing the song, Steal Away. Steal Away to Zion ain't got long to stay here. You're not bold enough to walk away from your slave master. Yes, sir. So you do the shuffle. Yes, <laughs> but the idea is to get away and get on to your own kind. Look, beloved, it's your time. Here's what we got to do. We're the most educated black people on the earth. That's right. But we're not using it well. We get out of America $204 billion making us the 12th richest nation on the earth. But we're not using our substance well. 
Last year we spent nine billion dollars on alcohol. Four billion dollars on tobacco. And nearly 15 billion dollars on illicit drugs. Nearly 30 billion dollars was thrown away last year by people that say they're poor. That's right. And need welfare. And need food stamps. Think about it. Look at how much care you take of your hair. How much do they charge you for the fix-up? The curl out and the comb out. You don't bring no food stamps to the barber shop. You bring hard money to the barber shop. Look at you. Spent forty-four billion dollars last year in food and non-alcoholic beverages. But the black farmer is suffering all over the South. But you spent forty-four billion dollars in food. And the merchants of death have been feeding you chemical death because we have been too lazy to go to the earth and do it for ourselves. Look! If we just got back some of the billions that we threw away last year, no black college would have to close. Lemoyne Owen would be ours. Tennessee State would be ours. Fisk would be ours. Meharry would be ours. You say they're already ours. I beg your pardon. They're not ours. The presidents of these colleges, great and brilliant black men and women, have to go to state capitals like bums with their hats in their hands, pleading to white folk, Massa, we need a gym, a new gymnasium for Lemoyne Owen. Master, you see, we played good basketball last year. Master, can, can we have a few more? And they say, well, you know, there's a black professor over there that's talking a lot of that black stuff. <laughs> we would give it to you if you just get rid of that fella. Well, he's gone. <laughs> the kind of education you're getting, it's hard for you to use it. You come out with a degree in black studies in a highly technical world. I got my degree. What can you do with it? Well, I really don't know. You go and try to get a job, they tell you you're overeducated for the position. <laughs> or you don't have the right kind of education for the position. This leads you to total frustration mentally. Beloved, we need the black study. We need to study and know ourselves, but we don't need to waste time getting a degree in black studies when you can't market that in a real world. Did you hear what I'm saying? You going to study black English. When we grow up speaking black English. What's happening, my man? Ain't nothing to it, dude. speaking black English. You got to learn to master the language of your slave master. Since he tricked you in English, you can't undo the trick without a knowledge of the tricker and the tricky language and the tricky use of that language. Are you listening to me? We need study in mathematics because without mathematics you can't build civilization. We need engineering, all kinds of engineering. We need all of the sciences. We need to master history. We need to learn languages that will allow us to communicate with our people. We must not only study law, we must learn to master the white man's law. We must study medicine, but not the medicine of drugs, but the real healing powers of the original people of the earth. We need to know commerce and business and finance and marketing 
We need to understand banking and international law because you are destined to be a mighty people. You can't come on being a mighty people and all you can give the world is a song and a dance. Breaking your neck. Using your elbow as a fulcrum and balancing your body as a lever and break dancing. <laughs> Adoring and idolizing a man like Prince. When you should say to Prince, you great Prince, but stop trying to be a woman and be yourself. You should say that. But after watching this video, I really want to know your thoughts in the comment section. And I think this message is straight and uh, self-explanatory. And uh, there is no explanation that needed to be given at the end of the video. Because Dr. Louis Farrakhan has nailed it. And he has said like almost everything. We as black people, I think it's time for us to wake up and uh, do what is rightful for the black community. Because for a long time, we've been sleeping not because we, we like to sleep but because we are forced to sleep by the oppressor through the information that he put on our mind we have been brainwashed for a long time to believe that the white christ is indeed our messiah so we've been there praising the white christ for decades for over 500 years praising the white uh, christ to come and save us from these atrocities but all these years, we are still in slavery. We are praising his, his God. We are worshipping his God. We are doing all the shit that the oppressor wants us to do. But we don't see the change. We don't see anything. You know, I was reading the story of uh, Jesus Christ. And uh, I learned that the name Jesus, the Jesus was a slave ship that was used to, to transport slaves from Africa to, to Europe. This is what we've been praising. We've been praising something that was used to carry us from Africa to Europe. You see how foolish we've been? It's good that people, God himself is, is waking his children up. And uh, when you once awake, please do not go back to where you are. Because if you go back, you are a slave. And you will be a slave forever. We are black people. We are black people and God loved us. God loves us. That's why he gave us this beautiful continent of Africa that each and every country is admiring to come and live and invest and explore. God loves black people. That's why he gave us this melanin that many people do not have. So do not take it for granted. We are the true children of God. We are the black people from Africa. We are the true children of God. Our continent is very, very blessed, very much blessed. Africa is the real heaven that people normally say that if you do good, you'll go to heaven. This is the heaven that they tell us. We are busy praying to go to heaven, but there's none who has ever gone to heaven. Then came back with a message of how heaven looks like. So it means heaven is here. So do good in heaven. Enjoy everything because everything that we need as humankind is here on earth. Everything is around us. Food is around us. Everything that your heart wants is around you and you can grab it free of charge without paying a penny. So we need to wake up as black people and do what is rightfully for the black community because God is here for us and with us. Our people were taken from the, from the continent of Africa and were put in a place that is not home. The children do not know the true history of their origin. But God is waking people up. God is telling you, showing you home. The people who remained in the continent of Africa are also being oppressed. But Moors is so, is so extreme. Africans are also being oppressed in their own land. Imagine having a name that does not uh, resemble your ancestors. It's very painful. Holding a name that doesn't resemble your ancestors because you're told that your ancestors were wrong and they are not good for you. So we've been here busy, busy casting demons, calling our ancestors demons. 
chasing the spirit out of our environment, inviting the spirit of the white Jesus in our homes. That's why we are still in problems. Africa is poor because it is structured to be poor like that. Until black people of Africa wake up, until we wake up and realize who truly we are, until we wake up and, sp and preach the true gospel of Yeshua Amashia, until we wake up and tell people that God himself is here in Africa. People are waking up, people are ditching Christianity, people are ditching Islamic, people want to go back to the religion of their ancestors. Because we believe that our ancestors also had religion. Their religion was the true religion. How comes it was chopped off from our memories? Why don't we preach the way our ancestors used to preach or worship? What happened? Were they evil people? Were they wrong? If they were wrong, where are they right now? If they are in heaven, why can they come back and show us how heaven looks like? So we need to wake up good people. Wake up good people and tell the world that we have served you and now it's time to serve our own God. Serve our true God. Let's come back home. Let's come back to, the, to the, our senses and preach the true reality, the true Christ, the true God, but not the Christ of the white man. We have to serve him because he is truly our God. God does not know you with your name because the name that you're using is not yours. It was given to you by a human being. God made a human kind. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video and I believe this video is so educative and informative. I'm pleased if you've not subscribed to this channel, please, you don't know what you are missing. Please subscribe, like this video and share this video to as many more people as possible. Until we meet again in my next video, guys. This is your blue black. I've been to Ethiopia. You ever see Ethiopians? First of all, you'd know one if you saw one. And they're very dark. And for 200,000 years, according to the Smithsonian, uh, life centered around Africa. Life was in Africa. <laughs> Here's an interesting little side tidbit. That white people did not even appear on the face of the earth until 20,000 years ago. And that's because of the Ice Age, phenotypes changed, skin color changed, they migrated out of Africa. You know the story. So we have a 200,000 year head start. We are God's first people. And God ain't stupid. But most of us don't even know this. We have no clue. We dabble in whatever history we dabble in. It's about 400 years old. That's about all we know. There's a much greater story than that.